Hi, I'm Antonio Seller, and in this video we will discuss a case study of Bayesian optimization, trying several acquisition functions in an example in which prior and true objective function have a good agreement, so you know everything works perfectly. Another earlier video discussed a similar case, but in here we will delve a little bit into the code. This is the basic methodology. We get a prior and some pre-existing samples. We must decide which is the best, the most promising next sample to try. And we acquire that sample. We update the Gaussian process model and repeat and repeat until our sample budget is exhausted. The second step needs to translate how promising a candidate point is into an acquisition function so that the best value of that acquisition function is the best guess on where we should sample. So let us start discussing our particular example. And in this example, our prior will have the mean given by this black parabola. We'll have some confidence bounds in dotted red lines. And the random realizations of that prior are these bluish or greenish curves and well the actual function to optimize will be this olive green dashed line of course the true function is unknown to the algorithm which is our prior well we will use this prior mean of course different to the true function we are testing And this squared exponential kernel will be the one we use. And you know, its frequency spectrum yields these realizations. And well, we see that, yeah, they are sort of in agreement with the shape of the true function. In the sense that this true function looks similar to the ones generated by the prior. But of course, we'll never know that in a realistic application, unless we take a lot of samples. But if samples are costly, then we must pray that our prior is right. Otherwise, Bayesian optimization will make very wrong decisions. For the moment being, this seems that it should work. So let's go with the code. We'll start by loading my prior with two previous samples, then our measurements will be the true function at those points plus normally distributed measurement noise with standard deviation 0.04. So we got these two measurements and then after some plotting, this is what we measured, these black dots. But of course, this is the only thing known to my algorithm. We don't know the true function. So let us discuss the main loop in Bayesian optimization in which, well, we have some cosmetic plotting stuff that we are going to hide and we'll concentrate on the optimization loop in which, well, we will repeat until we reach the maximum number of allowed samples. We start with two and then in our particular example here, we are allowed to take six more samples. So the thing is that we have two options to consider what is my best sample in order to output it as a final result or in order to compute a probability of improving over it or the expected improvement. Which are those two possibilities? Well, the first most naive one would be, well, my best sample is, you know, if we are going to minimize, well, it will be minimum of my function evaluation samples. That's it. However, if we have a lot of measurement noise, maybe I have, let's say, this set of samples. So well, my intuition tells me that, okay, maybe the Gaussian process in here is somehow the true clean measurement would be somewhere around here, let's say. So even if this one could be classified as my best sample, the minimum of my measurements, 
if I think I have a lot of measurement noise, but then maybe I would decide to use as my best estimation the so-called filtered measurement, the output of my Gaussian process regression estimate, in the sense that if I predict the mean output of my Gaussian process at the sampling points, data dot x, then I get sort of this blue-yellow dot, my filtered prediction. I will predict with this Gaussian process regression formula that we have discussed in earlier videos, so we will not delve into here. You may pause or download the source code. So, deciding on whether I take this filter prediction or this absolutely best, including measurement noise prediction, is the first thing I must choose. In this particular example, we will use this mean filtered estimate because it somehow cleans up measurement noise. And then, once we have decided my best thing, then, for instance, we must decide what I called Y target, which is the target for improvement, unexpected improvement, or probability of improvement. If I opt for the filtered version, then I decide, let's say, that my target estimate will be my best level minus, we want, we want to improve at least one standard deviation of the measurement of noise, because otherwise I cannot actually say that I have improved. Maybe it's just because of the noise. So we will compute when the mean option is selected, the probability of improvement or the expected improvement below this target value. And so we will look to obtain samples below that value. And if the probability of finding something below that value, given my Gaussian process, is very low, then maybe I can abort my Bayesian optimization and decide that I have finished. We'll see that later on. But OK, so we get either true measurement or filter measurement as my best sample. And then I get a target level for improvement that can be just the same as Y best or this filtered stuff Y best minus one measurement noise. Let's say, of course, you can tweak it, you know, but OK, let's leave it like this. Good. Then this is the selection of my best sample. Then we must compute the acquisition function in order to carry out Bayesian optimization. Then in this code, I will compute four acquisition functions. But of course, if you choose just one of them, then you can comment out everything else. So in here, I will compute the probability of improvement and the expected improvement with this formula and this formula, respectively. And I will also have a posterior mean and posterior variance. And then the point I should sample according to expected value will be the one with the best posterior mean, the minimum in this case, or the one with maximum probability of improving, or the one with best expected improvement, or this is the lower confidence bound, the minimum of this thing, with sigma being the square root of the variance, of course, then the minimum of this thing will be the one recommended to sample from the lowest confidence bound heuristics. Then, of course, if I just choose probability of improvement, then I can comment all this and comment all this. And, you know, you can examine the code to see how the four of them are computed. But maybe if you try to draft an example, you can clean up a lot of lines. So, well, once I get this probability of improvement best sample, then this will be the new, sam the new sample. The new measurement will be, well, the true function plus the measurement noise. And once we have that new sample and new measurement, we will add them to the historical sample record for next iteration and compute posterior and acquisition functions and so on. The rest of code here is just cosmetic plotting stuff. You can pause and have a look or just forget about it and look at 
the plots we will actually analyze. So let's do it. In this case, this is my first iteration with these black true samples. And the posterior has the blue mean, the red confidence intervals, and the pink line here is the one with the probability of improvement. So this is the point with largest probability of improvement. And then that's, that abscissa is what the acquisition function suggests. And then my new sample is the green dot. In fact, the maximum probability of improvement is 72%. Uh, so there's a lot of chance of improving given my prior and these two samples. Then the Bayesian optimization loop consists, of course, in just repeating, adding this green to the black historical record, computing posterior again, computing acquisition function, etc. If I add that one, then the new probability of improvement is 52%. The point with maximum probability of improvement is here with this new posterior. So we sample it. Then this green gets converted to black past samples. And then the probability of improvement tells me to go here. You know, it, we are now in a sort of gradient descent phase. We sample there. Then this is the new probability improvement. We sample. We are unlucky. We have a bit of noise worsening my sample, but then once I have this historical record, my probability of improving is just less than 8%, and it again tells to sample just in here, so up to measurement noise precision, let's say, we have found the optimum. Another iteration, so it's stuck there, and as prior and posterior, let's say, do agree, the blue curve sort of interpolates close to the optimum, reasonably close to the true green curve. And so my Bayesian optimization loop ends here. If we represent the progress, then OK, I have the horizontal line with the actual optimum and two measurement noise standard deviation confidence bands in green. So well, after a couple of decisions exploring towards the optimal direction, then the third sample suggested by the Bayesian optimization is basically at the optimum within the confidence interval given by measurement noise. So Bayesian optimization has performed very well in this example. If I change my acquisition function to expected improvement, then we find a similar behavior. The first proposed sample is almost there. When I acquire it, even if it's almost at the lowest expected value, you know, expected improvement is a little bit more optimistic. And it explores here, a bit to the left. And then as it finds a larger value than all remaining samples, gather around the true optimum. And well, here we have a set of samples around there with a bit of variations due to measurement noise and things like that. So we see that the first sample is already there. And uh, well, we see that the fourth sample, something happened there. It proposed here, which is kind of counterintuitive. But this kind of anomalous behavior can happen with probability of improvement or expected improvement, but we'll leave the discussion for the next video in the series. In here, okay, we end up finding the optimum, even if we have one strange sample there. And to end this video, if we choose the lowest confidence bound, it's the most exploratory acquisition function. The first sample, the low the minimum lower confidence bound, it's almost there. And the second sample, even if, you know, it's very unlikely to be this low. In fact, you know, we were not lucky and it's far above my best sample, but okay, it is exploratory. We try there with no luck. Then the next one will try there again with no luck. And then once we discover that there is nothing else to get, 
then samples will gather around the true optimum. And here we have more samples there. So progression of the exploration is very lucky at the first one, then it explodes a little bit and it finds that exploration was worthless, so it comes back to the neighborhood of the true optimum. So in this video, we have looked at the code and we have discussed the behavior of probability of improvement, expected improvement, and lower confidence bound as acquisition functions. And behavior was reasonably good because the prior and the true function were in strong agreement. Subsequent videos will discuss other situations in which behavior is not that good. But for brevity, we end this video here. Thanks for watching.